Hello, I am Ahmad and in this video we are going to have a numerical example about the T-stop and different modes. The table 6.2 given in Eurocode 1993-18 uh, depends on each component and a T-stop assumption that we went through in the previous videos. Now let's have a numerical example in order to understand how different modes would happen in a T-stop. Assume we have a column I section, which at the end, it has, for example, three bolts for connecting another plate. Uh, so in Eurocode, each component is uh, considered separately. For example, when it comes to a tension force coming to this uh, red plate, uh, in Eurocode, you need to determine the capacity of the flange of the column and also the plate. So in this example, we are going to just talk about the uh, flange to understand how it works. And as we went through in the previous video, uh, you need to consider each row separately and also you need to consider the group of the bolts. So now uh, let's have some assumption for our calculation. Let's say this is HEA 240, S235. Uh, let's assume that we have a thick plate. The reason is that uh, I'm going to solve it also with the uh, ANSYS model later on. And let's assume that this is uh, quite thick, that the deformation is coming only to the uh, column flange. So let's say this is 25 millimeter thick and we can assume that it's uh, even bigger than the uh, flange of the column and S235 and we have volts M20 class 88 for a start and then I will change the bolt size to other sizes to see how it affects and how the modes are changed. So first of all, we need to calculate the effective length according to the component. In this case, our component is the flange of the column. So here, if we look at the uh, table 6.4, equivalent length for an unstiffened column flange, if we are going to check inner bolts uh, or end bolts, at the moment I'm going just to focus on individual, we will go through the one complete example later for the connection and moment resistance uh, connection later on. Let's have a look on the dimensions. Assume that the first bolt row is located in the distance of 50 millimeter from the end and also 50 millimeter from the edge. I'm just uh, talking about this bolt row as one individual row. Then we need to determine what the uh, effective length of the T-stop is according to this table. So when you come to this table, we are considering bolt row considered individually. We need to consider circular pattern and non-circular pattern. We are talking about end bolt row in this example. Then we need to determine M and E1 and E. E1 as uh, we had in the previous uh, video, E1 is the distance from the center of the bolt in the end row uh, towards the edge of the component, in this case column, in the longitudinal direction. So this is E1, 50 millimeter. E is the distance between the center to the edge. So this is E. E is 50 millimeter and M, if we come back to the given instruction in Eurocode, so here we can see E is here and M is the distance between the center of the hole up to 80% of root radius distance towards the edge of the V. So for HEA240, this is 240 millimeter. Thickness of the flange is 12 millimeter. Thickness of the web 7.5 millimeter. And 
root radius 21 millimeter now we can determine m at the distance between the center of web towards the edge is 120 millimeter half of the width and this distance e is 50 millimeter in our case so m will be 120 millimeter minus 50 millimeter minus half of the thickness of web which is 7.5 millimeter divided by 2 minus 80 percent of 20 millimeter so 70 minus 375 minus 80 percent of 21 will be 49.45 millimeter now we have m we have e e minimum let's assume that the connected plate to the flange is quite wide as a result e minimum we can assume that is 50 millimeter the same as e for our column flange now we can go through the circular patterns and non-circular patterns for the end bolt row the minimum of 2 pi m and pi m plus 2e1 is calculated for circular pattern and the smaller of 4m plus 1.25e 2m plus 0.625e plus e1 for non-circular pattern the first one is 2 pi m 311 millimeter the other one is pi m plus 2e1 255 millimeter for non-circular pattern 4m plus 1.25e 260 and 2m plus 0.625e plus e1 180 so the minimum of each case is uh, l effective l effective circular pattern is 255 millimeter and l effective non-circular pattern 180 millimeter the next for mode one l effective is the minimum of L effective non circular pattern and circular pattern. So for mode 1, L effective 1 will be minimum of L effective non circular pattern and L effective circular pattern, which is 180 millimeter. And for mode 2, L effective 2 will be L effective non circular pattern, which is 180 millimeter. So here we can see that both modes are with the same effective length. Uh, it depends on other factors but typically mode uh, uh, l effective non-circular pattern might be the dominant uh, but still it depends uh, on the values of m e and other parameters so now when we have the effective length we can form our t stop in this case we have only one row it is individual row as a result we have only two bolts in our t stop so t stop for both modes if we look at from the top this is our t stop and if we look at it from the side in eurocode each component is considered for a t stop separately as a result it is assumed that the connected or connecting element to this t stop is quite stiff for example, I can assume that this is connected to a rigid plate and the calculation can be determined according to that. So here, assume that this is our case and we are going to determine the maximum load that it can be stand. So in the uh, previous video, we went through calculation of each uh, mode. Let's have a look on the outcome for each mode that we had as a reminder so if we have a weak flange and a strong bolt or we have a thin flange in another world then the failure will be mode one mode three is when we have a very thick uh, flange but we have a weak bolt and mode two is something between now here we have the effective length which is 180 millimeter and we are going to calculate which mode would be dominant in this case if the bolts are m20 so for m20 a stress area is 245 square millimeter as a result ftrd according to table 34 will be 0 0.9 asfu of bolt divided by gamma m2 
So in our case, FU bolt is 800 megapascal, AS 245 square millimeter, and gamma M2 is 1.25 according to Eurocode 199311. So it will be 141 kilonewt. According to table 62, first we need to determine the M. PL1 and 2RD, in this case L effective 1 and 2 are the same as the result MPL for both modes are the same. So for us T is the thickness of the flange which is 12 millimeter, L effective for both cases 180 millimeter, FY is 235 megapascal and gamma M0 is 1. As a result MPL 1 and 2 rd will be 0 0.25 12 s square 180 times 235 which will be 1.52 kilonewton meter so now we have mpl 1 and 2 rd we can calculate according to method one as far as it's a connection of the plate to the flange we assume that the prime force may develop so method one without backing plates for mode one then mode two and then mode three the only thing is uh, the n if we go through the next item in the same table we can see that it is given to be e minimum but less than 1.25 m it's because if you have a very uh, let's say a wide plate to be in contact with the component then the prying force might not be always at the edge it, it will be closer for example if we have the one plate and we have the t stop here and here we have the bolts so if it is very narrow then prying force might happen somewhere here as q but if we have a very wide plate so assume that we have very wide plate and also the distance of the bolts is quite long then the when this web is under tension then perhaps the prying force might not happen at the edge for example if you are pulling this uh, web up then the anchor or the place that it starts to force might be closer than the edge somewhere here that's why we have this limitation that n should be the minimum of e minimum between two components and 1.25 m it means that 25 percent more than m uh, is considered as the limit of prime force happening so in our case n will be minimum of e minimum which is 50 millimeter and 1.25 m 4945 millimeter obviously n will be 50 millimeter now we have m we have n we have plastic moment and ftrd as a result we can calculate these uh, three forces ft1 ft2 and ft3 okay now ft1 will be 4 mpl 1 rd divided by m so for our case it is 1.52 kilonewton meter divided by 49.45 millimeter so it will be 123 kilonewton then ft2 will be 2 mpl 2 rd plus n sigma ft rd or volts divided by m plus n so here it will be 2 times 1.52 kilonewton meter plus n which is 50 millimeter and here we have uh, two bolts so 2 times 141 kilonewton divided by 49.45 millimeter plus 50 millimeter then it will be 2 1.52 172 kilonewton and for mode 3 ft3 will be sigma ftrd which in this case will be 2 times 141 kilonewton so 282 kilonewton here we can see that ft1 is the minimum and it shows that uh, ft1 is going to be the dominant mode 
it means that the flange is thin compared to the capacity of the bolt. For this, we can write also one uh, simple MATCAD code that for each case we can have the uh, results easily as far as I'm going to change these uh, to be used for other calculations. So here I set it up on A4 with narrow margin. So let's start to have AS 245 S square millimeter FY 235 megapascal F U of bolt 800 megapascal uh, what else uh, m equals to 49.45 millimeter n equals to 50 millimeter uh, you can write e minimum and uh, 1.25 uh, l effective for this case is 180 millimeter and then we need to calculate f trd which is 0 0.9 times as times fu bolt divided by gamma m2 the only missing parameter perhaps here 1.25 and then this is 141 kilonewton then mpl rd equals to 0 0.25 times t s square times l effective times fy divided by gamma m0 gamma m0 is 1 and the thickness here is 12 millimeter kilonewton meter 1.52 then for the force uh, f e 1 rd equals to 4 times m p l r d divided by m and here also we can calculate the q as well so in the previous uh, video for each mode we calculated the uh, bolt force so here is from previous video q in phase one will be mpl rd divided by n which is 30 kilonewton and f of volts will be ft1 rd divided by 2 plus q of phase one so here you can see that if phase one happens then we do not have the complete uh, force of the bolt the bolt can resist up to 141 but as far as the mode one is happening then it will be smaller than that then for phase two ft2 rd will be two times m p l r d plus n times here we have two volts times FTRD divided by M plus N, which is 172 kilonewton. Q did, uh, uh, in this mode, Q is calculated differently. Q2 will be, here we have from previous video. So Q in phase two will be FT2RD divided by 2 minus m of times m minus m p l r d divided by n which here we can see that if it happens then it is more uh, if you calculate f b according to this equation let's have this as one then here write it down two and this is from two and this is also two so you can see that it is 141 uh, it's because here in the calculation we are using the full capacity so fb2 in in mode 2 the bolt will uh, reach its uh, maximum capacity according to your code and fb3rd will be two times fbrd which is 282 kilonewton so here we can see that uh, the results are the same should be and what else we have here um, so in our calculation at the moment ft1rd is dominant and as a result we expect uh, 30 kilonewton as uh, prime force and the bolt will be under 92 kilonewton force 
so let's have this as our nodes so here what happens uh, the first mode is dominant as a result this is our uh, expectation from this model and we would expect that we have 30 kN and in the bolts we will expect to have 92 kN in each one so if we want to sketch this uh, if this is the supporting part whatever it is and this one is going to be the flange of the column and here we have bolts we expect that the prime force happens somewhere here as 30.5 kN while we apply the load 123 kN in the web and here we expect to have 92 kN as the bolt force and we expect that uh, this area is in contact and this is how it should work now let's change the bolt size so now in the previous example we used m20 and we noticed that uh, the mode 1 would happen now let's change it to m12 let's go to m12 in m12 the shear area is 84.3 which is almost one third of uh, m20 it means that we are uh, reducing the capacity of the bolt now let's uh, try it in our matcad code instead of 20 245 we can just adjust it to 84.3 and we can see the results so here we can see that the results are uh, changed accordingly but as far as mpl remains constant ft1 is not changed but ft2 is going to be 79.45 kN and ft3 is 97 so it means that we have a weaker bolt compared to m20 but the bolt is not such weak that the plate uh, the flange is considered as a thick flange as a result mode 2 is happening let's have this in our note and write down how it works the results for m12 this is changed other parameters are unchanged ft1 is the same as before ft2 is 79 and ft3 is 97 so here we can see that uh, in this case this is our expectation to happen in uh, in our uh, t-stop so now if we sketch the t-stop so this will be 48.5 kN, 48.5 kN, we assume that it reaches to its capacity and here the prying force will be 8.83 while we are applying the load 79.45 kN to this uh, web and we expect that the deformation is this way this time so it means that bolt is also deforming now let's change this to even m8 for the third try 36.6 so here we can see that again ft1 is the same as before 123 ft2 is now 51 but ft3 is 42 so it means that we have a weak bolt and the flange thickness is quite thick so here the result is for m8 we change this value unchanged 123 51 42 as a result this will happen and there would not be any prime force so if we sketch our t-stop in this case we expect that the force to be 42.2 kN and uh, this is 21.1 21.1 and the deformation is more or less this way it comes up and uh, it starts to have a gap between the t-stop and the supporting plate that was the end of this uh, example numerical example to understand how to calculate different modes and also understand which mode would happen according to the uh, bolt diameter and the flange thickness in the next video i'm going to uh, model these three examples with the uh, ANSYS and we will go through uh, modeling 
and also analyzing to compare our results with ANSYS program. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.